Good evening. This is Think Tech Global, and we have a very special program for you this evening. We're going to be talking about the Vietnam War, and this broadcast is being done during the 40th anniversary commemoration of the end of the Vietnam War. This evening, we're going to talk about the beginning of the Vietnam War, and that is the Gulf of Tonkin incident. And we're going to revisit that incident um, and tying together a, a rather extensive program, special program that we did some time ago. And I'm going to have our engineer put up, uh, for those of you who did not see the previous program, here's the information uh, if you care to go back and see it. Um, and so uh, you can pick it up on uh, YouTube. What you would do is uh, type in Gulf of Tonkin, the record set straight, and you would catch uh, part one of this uh, very important series on reworking the history. Now, one of the things that has been most disturbing to many of the veterans of the Vietnam War is the way that the history of the Gulf of Tonkin incident was twisted. And uh, in our previous show, we were able to have uh, the Chief of Staff of the Seventh Fleet, uh, Admiral Basie, here in the studio with us to really set that record straight, which he did uh, with, with no reservations whatsoever. And in that program, Admiral Basie established that there was no question whatsoever, but that there was an attack on the United States uh, uh, destroyer, the USS Turner. Joy. Turner Joy. Yeah. During the uh, Gulf of Tonkin incident on August 4. Now, what we want to do today is we've, we've asked Admiral Basie uh, to come back, and we've brought an eyewitness uh, uh, for that event, Mr. Chad James. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, introduce those of you who haven't, uh, haven't met either of these gentlemen before. I uh, would like to welcome both of you to uh, our studio here. Uh, Joe Basie, it's wonderful to have you here again. All right, to be with you. And, uh, and this is a Mr. Chad James who's uh, flown out from Oregon. Yes. To join us for this program. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And for those of you in the audience who don't know, uh, Admiral Vasey is really a uh, living national treasure here. Uh, as I recall, it's okay for me to give away your age, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> Do I have to tell you? <laughs> I'm going to tell the audience I'm right now. I'm going I'm to tell the audience. Only 98. 98 years old. Uh, and so Admiral Vasey was a veteran uh, uh, in uh, submarines in World War II. And uh, at the time of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, he was the chief of staff uh, uh, for the Seventh Fleet and involved in the hands-on in charge of the investigation that took place after the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Now, Chad James, sitting next to me here, uh, Chad, um, uh, you were a radar man third class on the USS Turner Joy, is that correct? That's correct. And, at uh, the time, yeah. At the time. Yeah. And um, just so that our audience can help uh, position you on the ship, where, where are you uh, as, a, as a radar in third class on the USS Turner Joy? Where are you? We're in a room filled with uh, about 15 to 20 people, that, uh, sailors, that uh, is in Combat Information Center, generally called CIC. Okay. And you're, you're, you're watching uh, radar information as well as in charge of communi or in communication with whom? We're in communication with anybody that we're re re uh, steaming with. Uh, could be a carrier, could be other destroyers, cruisers, but we are steaming with these other people and we're in radio contact, uh, physical contact being that we are close enough and we come in contact with them. Okay, and, and so we are always communicating. We are the communication center for the ship. And did you personally, were you responsible for communications with the aircraft carrier, the USS Ticonderoga? Yes. And that was a headset that you had around your deck? Sure. Connected to the Ticonderoga, essentially? Yes. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reason that we have these gentlemen here is that Admiral Vasey, in the first show that we did, one of the things that, uh, Joe, that you mentioned was the, the, really the importance of uh, historians and uh, uh, 
uh, people interested in really understanding about the Gulf of Tonkin incident to, to, to look to the eyewitnesses. You remember that? Yeah. And, and so now we have an eyewitness here. Yeah. And uh, so, Chad, let, let's go through some, some, some pieces and things that you saw uh, that I think would be helpful for our audience to, to, to really appreciate. And so um, let's start with uh, the, the location of uh, the USS Turner Joy. And uh, let me talk to our uh, producer here. And if we could, if we could put up um, uh, on screen, let's, we've got this map up here uh, for the Gulf of Tonkin. And uh, the, uh, uh, let's, let's show uh, uh, photograph number four here, the USS Maddox. Now, uh, Chad, the audience is looking at the Maddox, and what was that at the time? The Maddox was in the Gulf of Tonkin, and the USS Turner Joy was not. Correct? And yes, that's correct. Okay. We were in the South China Sea. You were out uh, out of the way. Yep. And what was special about the Maddox? What was on the Maddox that made it uh, interesting, unusual, or vulnerable? Pick your chip poison. <laughs> um, she had been in Hong Kong, and they took her and put a big box on her, uh, welded it to her frame, and um, in there was top secret equipment, um, and there was a crew that was brought on board that uh, was not part of the Maddox's uh, crew. Okay. And they were to um, do their special thing. All right. And so the Maddox is in the Gulf of Tonkin. Let's go back to uh, n and number two. And she was, uh, it was an assignment called DeSoto Patrol. DeSoto Patrol. Back to the map. Uh, so the Maddox is in, is in the Gulf of Tonkin. Mm -hmm. And uh, on August 2, uh, the following happens to the Maddox. And the... Uh, let me ask the producer if you could put up um, photographs eight and nine. So on August two, these and I, I understand. I appreciate Chad that these photos are old. They're not. That, they're a little bit grainy. But that uh, these are North Vietnamese DR, DRV PT boats, and they are attacking the Maddox. Yes. And so uh, photograph number ten, if we could, no question that on the 2nd of August, the Maddox was attacked. Yes. And so following that attack, uh, what was the order issued to the Turner Joy? Well, first of all, we have to back up for a moment because the, nobody knew where the Maddox was. And the Turner Joy happened to be the closest ship to the Maddox. Right. We were on Watchdog Station it, but we were assigned to the um, Ticonderoga, uh, who was about 120 miles south of us. And our position was about 80 miles south of that island that you had up a few minutes okay. ago. Okay, Hainan Island. Han Hainan Island. And we were south on what was called Watchdog Station. Um, um, prior to the uh, August 2nd, we had heard her call sign over the long distance nets, but we looked at of each of us and we went to our op orders. Okay, Chad, we got to jump ahead here. Okay, real quick. but what, what the, there was an order given to the Turner Joy to do what? To go to protect a U.S. asset, the USS Maddox. And once that order was given, mm -hmm. then the Turner Joy steamed from the South China Sea into the Gulf of Tonkin. Yes. Do I have that right? Correct. Okay, and and once the Turner Joy uh, was into the Gulf of Tonkin on August third, what was the year? August second. August second. Yes. What was the year? Nineteen sixty four. Nineteen sixty four. Now. Yes. There's been an attack. Yes. You knew there was an attack. Yes. And the Turner Joy did what when she first went to the into the Gulf of Tonkin waters? She steamed directly toward where we were told to go, okay, which was and, to the Maddox. Okay, and, and essentially the order, as what you've explained it to me, was that, that 
that, that, that Turner Joy was, was ordered to protect the Maddox just like a, a blocker would a quarterback. Oh, yeah, with, with all costs. Okay, and then so during that first first several hours you're in the Gulf of Tonkin or 24 yep. hour period of time mm -hmm. the the Turner Joy and let's put up uh, photograph number five here if we could so we've got photograph number five the the Turner Joy uh, is is steaming around yes. and, and what are you seeing in that area oh junks North Vietnamese fishing boats yes okay and hundreds of, thousands a lot of chatter, a lot of traffic. Uh, yes. All right. And so um, we go to uh, uh, August 4. Yes. And the Turner Joy, let's go back to the map uh, if we could. The Turner Joy is uh, off the coast. They're inside the Gulf of Tonkin. And uh, uh, the, the interest is facing in which direction? The interest, your focus you're looking at what area before the turn? We're, we're following a pre-set uh, map that we're going to point on the map that's off of North Vietnamese coastline. All right. And, you're and then at, in the evening, we are leaving the coastline and going out to open ocean between Hanan Island and the North Vietnam coast. And we go out there and we steam around in a circle, whatever, during the night. All right. Well, the point that I'm trying to establish here is, do I understand correctly that essentially as you're on this patrol trying to protect the Maddox, uh, which has already been attacked, yes. the focus is, 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 is on the Vietnamese coastline sure. and the yes. fishing boats that are there, right? right. You're sure. not looking behind you. No, we are looking behind us. Because we're leaving. Not yet, because okay. you're, you're, you, we haven't got the important turn yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so you are essentially the, the whole area of interest is on the Vietnamese coast. Yes. And these, these fishing boats off the coast, the junks that you talk about. We're not interested in them, they're just in our way. I understand, but that is the direction that you perceive the threat might come from, correct? Yes. Okay. So now, uh, on August 4, the Turner Joy is, uh, changes directions and heads east. east. Yes. And so heading towards Hainan Island. Yes. And what did you know about any uh, bases on Hainan Island at that time? We knew that there was PT boat bases on the southern, south, western part of Hainan Island. Okay, so now, Let's take the August 4 incident where okay. there is the most controversy. And uh, the Turner Joy is steaming east towards Hainan Island. Following the Maddox. Following the Maddox in a blocking position. From North Vietnam. From North Vietnam. Because yeah. you, you turned away from the coast. Right. The threat you expected to come from the coast. Yes. And you're between the threat and the Maddox, which is exactly what you were ordered to do. Yes. Right? Yes. Joe, you following this? Is this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, so now you're heading east, and you're in this uh, combat information center. Yes. Behind the bridge. Yes. And tell us what you start to see on the radar screen. As we are going eastbound, everybody has gone down to Chow. And there's only uh, the operating crew aboard the ship, the minimal crew, which I was in CIC and I was the watch supervisor, which meant I was the highest ranking e uh, enlisted personnel in CIC. We were communicating, as always, between the Maddox and the Turner Joy on what's called Price CI and other uh, communication networks. And what happens from the Maddox while the, you're there? The Commodore is on board the Maddox. The Commodore has always been on the Maddox. Okay. The Commodore has his own staff and the Maddox has their own staff. We get a message, both the Maddox and the Turner Joy get a message from the Commodore staff that says 
we have credible intelligence that tells us that there is a wolf pack and wolf pack means a bunch of PT boats that are waiting for you and to ambush you. Okay. Hold that thought. Okay. Waiting for you and going to ambush you. We have credible intelligence. And you know what? We'll see you on the other side of the break. Okay. <laughs> Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island. I work in the ER there. But on Tuesday afternoons, I get to come and spend 45 minutes to an hour with Jay Fidel and the Think Tech staff. They're terrific professionals. They help us to bring some of the leading cutting edge topics here across our state to you. So you can join us at our show on healthcare in Hawaii to talk with leaders from across all the spectrum of health in our state, or you can join us for any other show where we talk about economic development or tourism or some really eclectic programs too. So really, we'd love to see you here on our show. Thanks for joining us and thanks for supporting us. To uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Wednesday, and we have Sharon Moriwaki, my co-host and co-chair of the uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and we have War Warren Bollmeyer today, a special guest with the Hawaii Renewable Energy Alliance, and also a member of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. In fact, he's our Renewable Energy Working Group Chair. So he is. He, takes he care is. Of all of our... You ought to see him in song and dance, too. <laughs> <laughs> he does the musical part of the show. Uh, Sharon is more serious than that, but not much more not serious. Much more. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what do you think of this show? I mean, is this good? I think this is good. We hope it's good. We hope it attracts a lot more people than than our forum so that people can see what's going on in energy and clean energy and uh, and and call in, write in, tweet yeah, or Twitter. We want Twitter that. We want, uh, we want public engagement, civic engagement from everybody because that's the only way we're going to get down the road on this. Right, Warren? Yeah, I think so. And it's an opportunity for guys um, like me to share a little bit of their mana on and uh, sometimes get the facts right. Who was that guy that said, just give me the facts, you know, start with the facts and then work from there? Oh, it was Dragnet guy, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jack that was Jack what, I was just a great school I barely that remember, that. remember that. Just the facts, man. Just a man, man. <laughs> Here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy, <laughs> every Wednesday from 4 to 5. You'll see. Come back soon. Right, Sharon? Great. Mark Byrne? Uh, yes. <laughs> if you just joined us, we've been talking about the a revisit of the famous Gulf of Tonkin incident. If history really got it all wrong, and we're here setting the record straight uh, with uh, Admiral Joe Vesey, uh, who conducted the uh, Navy's investigation after the Gulf of Tonkin incident, and also with Chad James, who was an eyewitness. And uh, Mr. James was uh, in the uh, Combat Information Control Center, and uh, if you just joined us uh, right before the break, uh, information had come from the Commodore of the Maddox, uh, Chad, that said, we have credible information that there is a PT boat wolf pack waiting for you for an ambush. Correct. Uh, let me translate that into civilian words. That means uh, heads up, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Heads up. All right. So now uh, the position is that the Maddox is in the lead, if you will. Correct. And that the Turner Joy is in a blocking position behind, which is what she was ordered to do. But instead of the threat coming from the stern, yes. the threat is coming from dead ahead, which is Hainan Island. Or, e yes, east, northeast, yes. And Hainan Island is China. Yes. All right. Now, there are two... Uh, changes of course very quickly. Tell us about what happens there. The um, Commodore staff told us we were going on 110 true, degrees true, 
and uh, he told us to uh, be prepared to increase speed and to change our course to 130. In doing that, we would be opening from where that wolf pack was. At, the, at that time, we were then looking over in that area, and we started tracking contacts. When we headed, when we changed our course and headed southerly, those contacts started coming toward us at a closing speed, which, of course, we're going at that time probably 28 or 30 knots, and they're going 45 knots. And then there was an order given to do what with the speed of the Turner Joy? To maximum. Hit the firewall. And go 32 knots and go at 170 degrees true, which is almost directly south. All right, and so the Maddox is doing the same thing, trying yes. to get out of the way. Yes. Get out of Dodge. Yep. yep. And uh, uh, so despite the fact that the, the uh, Turner Joy, which was a, a, a recent very recent model destroyer, the, correct? The, the, the class. The newest destroyer in the fleet. So the, the Turner Joy is at 32 knots. She's wide open. Yes. Trying to get out of Dodge. Yes. And what do you see happening on the radar screen with those dots? They are still, they're, they're increasing their speed to about 48 to 52 knots. Those are not fishing junk, are they? No. Not at 50 knots? No. They are what? PT boats. All right, then what happened? Then they start closing, and uh, when there was a particular distance that they, they wasn't going to uh, close any closer, and, that's, and the first contact we took under fire at 097, 6,000 yards. And uh, that was a torpedo? No, that was just a PT boat coming in at us. Okay, all and right. And so we fired upon that particular boat first. There was a petit, uh, torpedo uh, that was shot at afterwards. The, after the, that, the next the next boat came in and did a uh, torpedo uh, um, run on us, and both the Maddox and the Turner Joy saw it, and so we made an immediate evasive uh, turn, and. Lookouts aboard the Turner Joy saw the thin line of a PT boat or a, a torpedo going down our port side. Okay. And now, if we hadn't turned at that moment, we wouldn't be having happened? this discussion. You would have been hit? Yep, mid, a midship. Okay. Now, uh, you're the communication link with air support. Yes. And the air support is on the USS Ticonderoga in the South China Sea. Yes. Uh, uh, when this attack occurred, yes. were you in communication with the Ticonderoga? Yes. And uh, did they have aircraft airborne? No. All right. We'll get to this in just one quick moment here because, ladies and gentlemen, one of the more controversial pieces uh, that, that has uh, operated to twist the history was... Uh, or have been some statements made by a uh, uh, very famous uh, Navy pilot uh, who uh, goes by the name of Admiral Stockdale. And uh, Stockdale was on the, the Ticonderoga, and he was sent to observe or assist in this attack. Now, how many PT boats do you know that attack the USS Turner Joy during this event on August 4. You were watching on the radar. How many blips did you have there? We, I, would, I was personally saw the first two contacts, and I saw them being, if you will, destroyed uh, on our radar because I was sitting next to the chief who didn't have any contact with aircraft, so he had his repeater on surface. So I got to see when we shot the shells that the shells landed on the contacts. Okay. First two boats. First two. Uh, they make an attack. Yes. They shoot a torpedo. Yes. And you see them eliminated. Yes. Were any aircraft was, and let me put it this way, was Stockdale even airborne Did by this time? Not to my knowledge because, well, I don't know anybody's name because 
All we know of them is by their call sign. Were any aircraft launched from the Ticonderoga no. at that time? No. So any testimony or any statements that Admiral Stockdale made having to do with these first two patrol boats correct couldn't have happened because he wasn't even airborne that's correct and because if he was airborne you wouldn't have known about it because in my ear okay now there were two other patrol boats that uh came and 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 they were eventually eliminated but because then aircraft was up both the chief and i had to get busy taking care of the aircraft all right now you knew as you were uh, approaching Hainan Island yes. that there was, this, this was a location where there was a, Japan, a Chinese PT boat base. Correct. After there was an inquiry, there was a gentleman from your ship by the name of Derek. Okay. And Derek went to this inquiry and he returned and what did he say? They showed me a bunch of pictures but what I saw, I didn't see. You, what he saw, what they showed in the, the naval inquiry, right. in terms of pictures of the PT boats, yes. was not what he saw on August 4. Correct. He was in a position on the Turner Joy as to see, have a visual contact with those boats. Yes. yes. Now, uh, let me ask the producer if you would put up um, uh, for, no, no, uh, let's go to number 12 here. So I want to show you, Chad, a picture of a PT boat, and it relates to some work that you were doing later. Tell us this story very quickly. After a week, I was the custodian for the secret publications, and I was doing my job of replacing pages when I came upon a picture. I remembered Derek's comment, and so I finished working on the secret pubs, put them up because they're in a special place, and locked it up and took this picture up to CIC. I had a discussion with our CIC officer and our chief raiderman, and they agreed that we should ask Derek to come up to see this picture. So we laid the picture on the DRT, which is about twice the size of this desk, and we are doing some things waiting for him to arrive. He walks in CIC door, and before we can even ask him why he was brought there, he goes, that's what I saw. And what is, let's go back to the, to the photograph of the ship again. Uh, that, that is the picture that I saw that he saw. And what that is, is that a, ship? That is a P-6 PT boat that was the newest, latest PT boat in the Chinese Army or Navy. Interesting. Let's go now, uh, producer, if we could put up uh, uh, number 13, if we could. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, in case you can't read this, uh, let me just... Uh, tell you that this is a letter that President Johnson sent to the Soviet Russian Premier Nikita Khrushchev a few days later on August 7, 1964. And uh, excerpting from the letter, he's telling Khrushchev, this is our President Johnson, we do not know, for example, whether they, the attacks, were instigated by Peiping, meaning Beijing, or made by the North Vietnamese in an effort to draw Peiping into the area. And then before closing, the letter, Johnson added, anything you can do to restrain either the North Vietnamese or Peiping from further reckless action in this area would be most helpful to peace. And uh, uh, Joe Vesey, you've written and, uh, 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 that these words, uh, or Peiping from further reckless action, suggest the possibility that Johnson knew at that time that there may well have been a direct involvement by the Chinese <clears throat> in the August 4 attack <clears throat> on the Turner Joy. Yeah, exactly. That's precisely what he must have suspected. I don't know what else. He probably had been briefed with some special intelligence, you know. Okay. 
Let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, more. Stay with us. We're going to go to a commercial break now. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I host Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. And I do this because I care about science literacy in Hawaii. I want to spread the understanding that science is a vital and interesting part of everyone's life. I want to make sure the broadest possible spectrum of people understand the beauty and the value of science and realize that science plays out each and every day of their lives. I want you to understand that science is fun. So we bring on to this show each week guests who are scientists, from astronomers to zoologists, and we talk about what they do and how they do it. But most importantly, we talk about why you should care about their work, why you should see that their work has value and impact on your life. So I hope you'll join us Fridays, 1 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. You can watch us via live stream. You can watch us uh, recorded on Olelo. And you can see us uh, each week. We hope you'll join us. We're back. And we're talking about a revisit of the Gulf of Tonkin incident here in this, the 40th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War, because it is the USS Turner Joy that was in the beginning of the war. And uh, we want to want to kind of wind up this segment a little bit with an interesting statement. And uh, Chad and Joe, uh, we've got uh, uh, Admiral Joe Vasey with us who was the Chief of Staff of the 7th Fleet and t in charge of the, the Navy inquiry following the Gulf of Tonkin incident, and Chad James, who was an eyewitness to that. Um, I want to bring in a statement that I think has caused a lot of, in addition to the, the rather bizarre representations made by Admiral Stockdale, uh, because he wasn't even airborne when the attack uh, the first two patrol right. boats occurred. Correct. But uh, another statement that was made that has, I think, has really uh, confused the history. And that statement was made by then uh, Vietnamese Minister of Defense, General Vo Minh Zap, or Jap as he's known. Yeah. And uh, 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 Chad, what did General Jap say, or Zap say, about this August 4 incident? Do you recall? I can't quote his exact words, but it was, I gave, there was no authorization to uh, have PT boats uh, 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 make an attack on any U.S. ships on August the 4th. Interestingly, he doesn't cover the Chinese portion. He's only talking about authorization from North the Vietnamese Navy. The North Vietnamese Navy at that right, time. So right. I, I find that I find that most interesting that that how this fits in with the 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 warning of the Wolf Pack that that Correct. came to the USS Turner Joy, as well as the identification of the actual PT boat that you have made in this program here today. Um, uh, the Maddox was involved at the end of the war. What was that? I'm sorry. The USS Turner Joy was oh. involved at the end of the Vietnam Vietnamese. No wonder I got a blank stare from you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, um, a piece of information or history that most people don't realize is that not only did we fire that shot on the August the fourth, which we consider was the first shot of the Vietnam conflict, the Turner Joy was also there on the last shot. And how that occurred was the Marine that was on the land uh, in Vietnam, South Vietnam, um, uh, when he called for fire, he was watching his watch, and he knew when the armistice was. And 10 seconds before, um, he called for fire, and the Turner Joy fired the last shot of the of the Vietnam War by you know, of a naval asset of a naval oh of, in the uh, from a naval asset okay. yes so ladies and gentlemen here we have let's see if I have this right the Turner Joy is bookend number one the beginning of the Vietnam War we're here commemorating the 40th anniversary of the yes. end of the Vietnam War and the Turner Joy is the other bookend firing the last shot first Correct. and last shot first and last shot perfect bookends for the grand old lady perfect. Turner Joy is moved to City of Remington. Yes. Set up as a museum. 
Yes. And um, City of Bremington, how do they treat you folks initially uh, having to do with this? Uh... At, at first they were a little reserved, and uh, in fact some of their media people um, were not happy that the Turner Joy was brought there to be a historical museum piece. But Why is that? It's uh, because of the history? Yes. Because the history is that, that got twisted. Yes. Is that the Turner Joy was involved in a big fraud or scam, that this attack never happened, and right. it was some uh, decoy duck used by the U.S. Navy to, to seduce the United States into war, something like that? Well, it was even worse that uh, we were a bunch of um, uh, sailors who didn't know what we were doing, and we were shooting on dolphins and flying fish. And, of course, our ship um, had what's called the E on the side of her, and it had a hash mark, and that means, meant that we were capable of doing our job to excellence, and we had that E and, and hash mark before we ever got to the, uh, this Vietnam situation. So, so, in essence, the city of Bremerton uh, agreed to have this museum there, the yes. USS Turner Joy, yeah. but it's sort of like, almost like inviting somebody who has leprosy into your community. A Almost. little bit. Okay. Yes. All right, now, now, yeah. Hold on. We'll, we'll get to the city of Bremerton in a minute because there's some, some good news on this. Yes. Um, because they don't, the, the, the good folks of the city of Bremerton don't know until they see this show how famous the USS Turner Joy really is and that, that she really is the bookends of the Vietnam War. Yes. Now, it, it wasn't just this event that the Turner Joy did. She did a lot throughout her career. Okay. 59 to 82. The original program, and let's put, uh, Madam Producer, if we could put mm -hmm. back up that uh, yep. previous episode. The original program that we did, Joe Vasey, following an extensive article that he wrote, uh, opened up this, uh, this by way of a video effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the, the program that we created here in Hawaii was shown at a, a reunion of the crew. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, you have to appreciate that the crew has lived with this black stigma for some 51 years. And so at this reunion, that previous episode was shown. And Chad, why don't you tell uh, uh, Joe what happened there? I mean, he, he doesn't know. Yes, we had invited the Admiral in 2012 to come to South Carolina to our reunion. And um, he said, well, I would love to, but I don't have a date. So we okay, so he doesn't have a means to get there. So he said he would do a video. And so hence the video was created, and I was the presenter of the video, and we had about 120 people in the audience, and it uh, it got quiet, of course. And um, when it was done, as they were bringing up the lights, which surprised me, you got a standing ovation uh, and uh, and a salute. First so, time. Admiral first, Vasey, first, thank you. First time. Our, our shipmates were very fortunate and happy to have had you do that right and one of the reasons the main reason for coming here today yeah. is to say thank you from the crew of the Turner Joy thank you and to the city of Bremerton we want to give you a thank you because now you having watched this program and and uh, the the films and documentaries having to do with the real truth with respect to the Gulf of Tonkin, now you realize what a what a wonderful move it was, I think, Chad, to, to bring the Turner Joy there, because she's a very, very famous ship. Huh. Yes. And uh, we hope that uh, many people will get a chance to visit the museum. Um, I want to ask you one kind of a interest, interesting question before we wind this up, Chad. Okay. 
You're on the headset with the Ticonderoga. Yes. And the, this attack is underway. And uh, does anybody ever, do you ever hear anybody say, well, are, are you guys sure there's an attack happening? And, 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 and w w was that with, the, ty was that with the, the Turner Joy or with the Maddox? This is in the very beginning on August 2nd when just out of being kind, there was a group of people in CIC that were having a discussion. Well, when you're underway, you have to be monitoring the CID net 24-7. Okay. So we generally have it on speaker. Okay. But since it's on speaker and these people are talking, I walk over, I turn down the speaker, and I put the boom mic on. Okay. I'm sitting there just monitoring. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes this message, flash, flash. Any station this net, any station this net, this is Sinbad, Sinbad, please respond. Who's Sinbad now? Who's Sinbad? Min, min, uh, Sinbad is the Maddox. Is the Maddox, okay. Yep. So I know Sinbad, but what the heck? Well, okay, yes, I had to respond as immediately as humanly possible. That's what we're ta taught to do. So I didn't ask anybody's permission. I just said, Sinbad, this is ballroom ballroom being the Turner Joy. She says, are you in communication with the Ticonderoga? And I said, yes, let me check. I come back and said, yes, I am. She said, well, tell them we're under attack. We are under attack. Yes. This is coming from the Maddox. Coming from the Maddox. So then I get with the uh, Ticonderoga, and in a matter of 15 or 20 minutes, they find a way in which they can communicate with uh, the Maddox. At that point in time, we did not know where the Maddox was. Okay. We knew that she had to be somewhere in the general location because of the CID net. Okay, let's wrap it up here. Okay, so they then send aircraft up to the Maddox and uh, take care of those PT boats. It was after that time that we get our assignment which is now to go, and they told us where to go to meet the Maddox, okay. which was about 180 miles. Joe, yeah. no question that there was an attack on August 4? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Chad, no Absolutely, question? Absolutely, no question. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you found this uh, uh, program educational, and uh, 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 we want to leave you with the... the the view of the grand old lady sitting comfortably in her new museum berth in the city of Bremerton. Good night.